my name is Shelley Balls and I am a nutrition and food safety educator for the University of Wyoming Extension Office. Today we are going to talk all about tortilla fillers, what we can put in our tortillas uh, to make a variety of different foods and to stretch the food dollar a little bit too. So first off, we want to pick a good tortilla. So what I chose today was some whole wheat tortillas. And if you're looking for a healthier option, this is the way to go because they have a lot of whole grains in these and they have extra fiber, healthy fats and antioxidants and phytonutrients. So our body is going to be a little bit healthier for these. Corn tortillas are probably not going to be your best option for burritos because once you start folding and kind of molding those tortillas into um, say your freezer bag or say just on the go, it's going to rip and it's going to tear. So we want to try to choose a tortilla that's going to be a little bit more flexible. So just a flour tortilla. I chose the whole wheat flour tortilla and that's a great option. So first thing that you want to do is make sure that your tortillas are nice and warm. So what thi one thing that you can do for this is place your tortillas in some wet um, damp cloths, put it in the microwave and microwave for about 30 to 45 seconds and this gets them nice and warm, they're nice and pliable after that and then we can start filling. So for my example today I just have some breakfast burrito filler. So I have some breakfast meat, it's just sausage, but you could use bacon, you could use ham, um, any kind of steak, so even wild game steak, chop it up, put it in there. Uh, maybe you have some beef steak left over from the night before, you can chop that up, put it in there. You can also do a lot of different other protein sources, so maybe you want to put beans in there, maybe you want to do a, um, maybe even seafood, maybe you have some salmon you could put in there. So there's so many different options, maybe some shrimp. So totally a lot of different options for your protein it doesn't have to be animal based you can do pr uh, plant based any kind of thing that you want to do for your protein in there your next thing is also a protein but your egg so i just scrambled up some eggs in here uh, pretty simple i just put some eggs in there you can add some milk if you want them a little bit fluffier to boost up the volume in there and then lastly we have our vegetables so i did a mixture of some diced up zucchini some sliced up yellow squash onion, garlic, hash browns, and some grape tomatoes. So we just chopped up all those things. And then I also had a bag of spinach. And so this bag of spinach was gonna go bad anyways. So a couple weeks ago, I threw the bag of spinach in the freezer and I got it out. And once that spinach is frozen, you can actually just like crumble it up. And it's really nice because then you don't have to get your cutting board out. You don't have to get your knife out. You don't have to make a mess. All you have to do is crumble it up once it's all frozen and then add it to this dish. So you can see right here, you can see a little bit of green specks in there. You know spinach, it cooks down to almost nothing, but I put some, uh, quite a bit of spinach in there and it's a great way to just boost up the nutrition of that burrito or the casserole, anything that you wanna add that spinach to. So it's a great way to use the spinach before it goes bad. Um, so we've got our fillers. You can even add your salsas, your hot sauces, jalapenos, make it spicy, whatever you like to do. Add avocados, just make it your own, right? So I'm going to show you how to start filling your tortilla. So we're going to add our tortilla here. And then I'm going to add our protein. And the tip with making your tortillas is sometimes you get it to the end and you're like, ah, oh, I added too much filling. So if you ever have this problem, just scoot a little bit out of the burrito and then roll it back up. And you'll probably have a lot cleaner of a burrito in the end. Then you won't have things falling all over your, your floor, your counter. So we're going to add some egg to that. And then lastly, we're going to add our vegetables. So this is the yellow squash. We have some potatoes in there. Zucchini. Try to look for some vegetables that are in season too, because those vegetables that are in season are going to be a lot cheaper. And it will also add some variety to your diet too. All right, so once we have our burrito here, we are going to start by rolling it up. So first things first, you wanna roll up the sides and then make it as tight as possible. So I like to kind of squish mine down in, but so you're gonna roll one side, roll the next side over, tuck the ends, make sure those are tucked in nice, and then roll it up. So you're gonna have this nice, nice little burrito, okay? So once you get it, like this, a great thing to do is um, 
pans here if you like a nice crispy burrito. Um, but if you're gonna freeze it, which is a great way to extend those, that food across a lot of different um, weeks is roll it up, make it as tight as possible, get a piece of tin foil, and then roll that piece of tin foil as tight as possible. Okay. The more air that you can get out, the better, the less freezer burn you're gonna get. So you're gonna roll that burrito up. And then once you have all your burritos prepped, you can throw them in a freezer bag, like a Ziploc bag, for example, throw them in here. And as you need them, you can pull them out, thaw them out and go from there. So you can be headed to class, headed to work. You can pull one of your burritos out in the morning, pop it in the microwave. The best option is to put it on defrost for a few minutes until all the contents inside are um, thawed out. And then if you really like a crispier burrito, because sometimes once you get that burrito in there, it kind of gets a little bit moist after you freeze it. It thaws out, all that moisture kind of pulls out of the food, and so it makes your tortilla a little bit sticky. If you don't like that, you can put a little dash of or a spray of oil into your saute pan or your saucepan at home and grill it on both sides and that will make your cheese in there melt. It can make your, your burritos a little bit more crispy if you like that, better than that kind of soggy that you might get. So depending on how you like that, you're gonna have a to-go breakfast, which is great because you're gonna control how much um, salt is gonna go into it. Because when you buy frozen burritos at the store, a lot of times they pack them in with the salt. They pack a lot of other things in there that aren't going to give us our nutritious base. So if we look at our veggies, you can add the vegetables that you like at home. So make it your own. So another great tip when you're making burritos at home, make sure you're starting with um, your food items that aren't too hot. If you start with a hot food product, it's going to make a moist um, kind of environment in the bag or in the tin foil, and that's going to make your burrito even soggier when you go to thaw it out after it's been frozen. So watch out for that. But here is an example of a great thing to make, a breakfast to go. I love making breakfast burritos in a big batch, putting them in the freezer and just being able to warm one up in the morning and not have to eat cereal every day of the week. It's a nice little change up for that reason. Once you are thawing out your breakfast burritos or any kind of burrito that you have, if you do wrap it in tin foil, do not put the tin foil in the microwave. Make sure to take that burrito out of there. It's gonna be frozen, so it's gonna stay in its little nice little tortilla. So let's talk about other things that we can put into our burrito or our tortillas. We could do quesadillas, we could fill them with cheese, meat, beans, rice. There's all kinds of things that you can do with a quesadilla. Um, you can fill your tortillas with bean, and bean chicken and rice. You can fill it with beef and bean, uh, peanut butter and jelly. Say you ran out of bread and you're like, oh, I ran out of bread. I don't want to go to the store, but I do have some tortillas. So you can even put your peanut butter and jelly in a tortilla. You can make an awesome wrap in a tortilla. Just fill that tortilla up with your meat, your cheese, lettuce, tomato, anything you want in there. Avocado, oh, avocado. You could double, double the avocado, right? So you could even do avocado in your breakfast burritos. You could do avocado on your wraps fajita, like you could bang a fajita, put some avocado. There's like no wrong way to put avocado on your burrito, right? So watch out for um, anything that is, you wanna always wanna make sure that you wanna cook your product, okay? So always cook your foods before you put it in the burrito because when you microwave it, it's not gonna fully cook that through. You're gonna have some foods that are gonna be overcooked if you put it in there raw. So always make sure to cook your food before you put it in the tortilla. So whether you're making fajitas, tacos, you can even freeze taco meat with some rice in there, fold it up and do the exact same thing. And you have meals to go, which is always a great easy way to number one, eat delicious meals, but number two, um, save money and watch your nutrition and make sure that you're getting um, some of those nutrient dense foods and less of those calorie um, and less nutrient dense foods. So once you have a big bag of frozen burritos, and you can make sure to label those too, because you don't want to have, say you have a fajita burrito in there, and you grab that out for breakfast, and you're expecting a, a breakfast burrito, just make sure to label it and make sure to put the date on there. And they're best when they're eaten within a month, but one to three months is 
what you're going to have for your best quality. If you put it in there for longer than that, you are going to just increase your chances of getting that freezer burn, which doesn't taste the best. So try to make either smaller batches if you're not going to go through them within one to three months or try to make sure that um, you label them and eat them within that time. So one to three months is what those frozen burritos are going to be for best quality in there. If you have any questions, please comment below and we will get those questions answered and help you out as much as we can. Thank you.